The escalating crisis of insecurity and banditry in northern Nigeria has reached a critical boiling point. At the moment, Nigerians are beginning to wonder if government really has the ability to put an end to the menace and secure the lives and properties of citizens. In the light of the recent abduction of over 60 children in the Buddha community, Kajuru local government area of Kaduna State, the crisis of insecurity and banditry in northern Nigeria has taken a dangerous turn, serving as a stark reminder of the urgent need for intervention. Meanwhile, President Bola Tinubu has again directed that on no condition should ransom be paid by government to kidnap as bandits or other criminal elements for the release of their victims. As he read the country's security agencies, the riot act following the incessant kidnap incidents in the country. In a report put together by a Rice State House correspondent, Adesua Omorwan, the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, revealed the directive yesterday in Abuja while briefing newsmen at the end of the Federal Executive Council meeting chaired by President Tinubu at the State House. In Nigeria, amidst a concerning surge in kidnappings, President Bola Tinubu has taken a decisive stance against ransom payments, prioritizing the safe return of abducted citizens. This significant announcement came following the conclusion of the third Federal Executive Council meeting of 2024. Government is not taking any excuses. The, the president has directed that security agencies must, as a matter of urgency, ensure that these children and all those who have been kidnapped are brought back to, in safety and also in the process to ensure that not a dime is paid for uh, uh, ransom. So it's important to underscore that. No dime, government is not paying anybody any, any dime and the government is optimistic that um, these children and other people that are abducted will be brought back to their families in safety. Recent incidents have highlighted the severity of the issue with multiple mass abductions occurring across northern Nigeria. Last week, over 500 individuals, predominantly women and children, were abducted. Notably, 287 children were kidnapped from Kuriga in northwestern Kaduna State, marking the largest mass abduction in three years. President Bola Tinubu describes the situation as unacceptable. Uh, the government will not condone uh, abductions or kidnappings or any kind of uh, criminality in that direction. We are seeing, of course, this happen and government is taking very proactive steps first to mitigate that and also to stop the spread. The gravity of the crisis is further underscored by the exorbitant ransom demands made by bandits. In one instance, bandits abducted 16 residents of Goni Gora area in Kaduna, demanding a staggering 40 trillion naira ransom, along with 11 Hilux vans and 150 brand new motorcycles for their release. While a prominent Muslim cleric has advocated for the president to negotiate with bandits, the government says it is considering offers of international assistance. We are aware that it's not just the U.S. that has actually offered. Uh, other countries have also uh, offered uh, to, support, uh, to support Nigeria. Um, but what we can tell you is that government is still reviewing, reviewing these offers and uh, the position of government will be made known uh, uh, to you. Meanwhile, Amidst security concerns, grain distribution to cushion effects of food inflation crisis faces secrecy due to fears of attacks on supplies. Distribution has commenced. Uh, however, I would not want to mention anything because of the security aspect of that distribution. Uh, we have, we're distributing to state capitals in the first instance now. Um, as you all are aware, um, the risks uh, involved in uh, uh, vandalization of uh, food stuff in transit. So um, we're working assiduously, assiduously with, with the Office of the National Security Advisor and the DSS and the police. And uh, as I can assure you, um, we have started distributing, especially in the Northwest, 
with Northwestern states. We're distributed out of seven points, and that's all I need to tell you. In other news, the council approves augmentation for road projects and shoreline embankment in Nigeria's commercial capital. We also got approval for outer marina shore protection. The shore protection was done over 50 years back with uh, sheet piles. BPV found merit in build well because of cost and of course latest technology in doing shore protection using uh, interlocking uh, concrete, which will not be subject to rusting. And so we got approval for build well in the sum of 114 uh, billion. And this uh, shore protection is protecting a lot of critical infrastructure of federal government and even state government. They recently uh, inaugurated you know, a uh, rail line in Lagos by Mr. President for Lagos State. It's, it's just uh, by the shoreline. As the country grapples with security challenges, the government acknowledges a disturbing trend of bandits setting their sights on softer targets. It stands on ransom payments and directives to the security agencies are crucial in securing the safe return of kidnapped individuals, with time being a precious commodity for those held captive, as anxious families await news of their loved ones. From the presidential villa, Adesua. Omoruan. Joining us now on the show is Emmanuel Uma, former Commissioner for Internal Security and Humanitarian Affairs, Niger State. He will be joined by Uyekachi Adekaya, a security expert, CEO of risk management company PR24, and a fellow of the Nigeria Institute for Industrial Security. Gentlemen, good morning and thank you for joining us. Uh, Dr. Ruben, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much indeed. Well, um, Onyekachi Adekoya, if I may just start with you. The president, we were told, has directed that on no condition should ransom be paid. And he has read the riot act to the security agencies to make sure that uh, abducted persons, 287 students uh, from... Uh, Kaduna State, uh, from uh, the Kuranga community in Chipun local government area, should be uh, rescued without government paying any ransom. Now, we have he heard that before. You know, uh, we won't pay ransom, we won't pay ransom. Uh, security agencies go and rescue them. We are sure Nigerians that uh, the uh, abducted persons will be. This hardline position by the president. Is he just speaking as government, you know, government, leader of government, you know, uh, or it's possible for the Nigerian government to rescue uh, the abducted persons without really paying. And to you, uh, uh, Mr. Omar, well, you used to be commissioner for internal security in Niger State. The whole of that area, from Niger State to Kaduna, to Boronu, to Zamfara, is the same story all over again, one government after another. Now, as someone who has been commissioner in charge of internal security, why is uh, the ecosystem for criminality so you know, rich in that axis of Nigeria? Let me start with you, Onye uh, Kachia uh, Dekoya. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Abati, and thank you for having me. Um, firstly, my um, condolences, um, not condolences for now. Um, of course, our prayers are with those who are kidnapped and um, the families at this time. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy to see that the presidency is now taking a nuanced approach to some of these national issues. Um, thankfully, we are not seeing the same issue we saw during um, the Niger coup incident. Um, nuance in the sense that this, this is a measured response. Um, yes, in dealing with matters like this, you must place the carrot, you must place the stick, uh, but you cannot continue to say we will pay ransom or we will do all that we can. There must be a, a postured response from government to say no ransom will be paid. Now, that statement has a lot of implication beyond the current situation uh, because as you all know, um, kidnap for ransom has become a major industry with a very entrenched value system. Um, 
or what I call the value delivery system. Um, so we need to begin to dissuade people that that's a, a viable option to go. Um, that's one. Two, if you talk about presidential directives in the security sector, a directive from the commander in chief is very powerful. It carries significant weight once it comes from the office of the president. Um, I have all the confidence in Nigerian security forces that if we want to get a job done, we can do it. But we can't do so many things at the same time. So what the directive simply means is that um, this matter will be prioritized um, and given significant attention. Other matters may suffer as a result, um, but that's where the directive has come. And um, as you know, Dr. Bati, you've been um, in the villa. Um, this, this can be done, but at the cost, at what cost will be the question? There will be some costs, a trade-off. Uh, but the, the response is nuanced. The directive can be um, executed um, with, with reasonable time um, if, we, if we are really, really interested in um, dissuading will-be attackers that this is a viable way to make money going forward. So that would be my response. Well, Mr. Umar, Manuel Umar, over to you. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, so, all right. So, let me also add my voice uh, with the voice of my colleague here to commensurate with uh, the families, the community, this government, and all meaningful, I mean, love, peace, uh, peace loving Nigerians um, that are affected by this unfortunate incident. Um, this is an incident that uh, I strongly believe is avoidable if only we adhere to certain principles and protocols that uh, we have in our books and in our documents. Now, talking about uh, my um, Niger, Kaduna, and some other uh, frontline states that are affected by this insecurity, uh, you all agree with me that uh, most of those communities that are attacked are communities that are hard to reach had to reach in the sense of lack of development, lack of presence of government, and they've become uh, what today we term as ungoverned spaces. Now, once you have ungoverned spaces, of course, criminals take advantage of that. And so, and because um, this it has become a, a big enterprise, um, the kidnapping for ransom and other uh, crimes that have been committed within this area. So you keep seeing the reoccurring of this incident. Uh, so those are things that are just uh, giving room for such uh, heinous crimes happening around those areas. All right. All right. So, Mr. Mar, I hear you. And uh, we've talked about the fact that we've had a number of guests, security experts, former um, security agents, come on the show to give possible solutions or recommendations on how to tackle insecurity in the middle um, belt in the north. Um, northern part of Nigeria especially. However, despite these many suggestions, it doesn't seem like we are winning this war. Do you think it's a lack of political will or the fact that there's no, there are certain things that ought to be in place, resources, finance, that is the challenge as to why we haven't been able to tackle insecurity? Because for everyone that's come on, it's like, it's, it's possible. It's possible. We have had white papers done. We have had um, recommendations. We've had reports, but none of this taken forward. Why do you think this is so? And then I ask uh, Mr. Dekoya, with regards to the no ransom payment, is it justifiable for the president to make such an announcement, which is, I mean, on the surface of it, very good, but without commensurate announcement as to how to, they plan to secure lives and properties, because it is difficult to tell a parent to not pay ransom when their child is in captivity and they are demanding money. How do you say no payment of ransom, yet we do not see any actions taken to ensure that the need for a ransom is prevented in the first place? I'll start with Mr. Omar. I think it's a combination of many factors. Um, first, let me just pick the Kuriga incident, for instance. We have a policy, an initiative, the Safe School Initiative that was launched in this country. And every agency that we are charged for uh, with responsibilities are mentioned in there. In fact, um, I think a 10 million US dollars was, was, was voted for that project. Now, this incident happened. And it, this, I discover also that we do not 
hold people responsible for their actions. The question is that who dropped the ball? What is it that happened? And what in, during our after action review, do we call or hold anybody responsible for his action? But we don't do that. And also, you discover that we have a long years of negligence. Negligence in the sign of both from the government and from also the people. Let me take that school, the LEA in Kuriga, for example. I understand that the school, well, there are two schools in that community and they were merged into one. What, are, why, what happened based on the security assessment of that school? Who did the assessment? What were the protocols that were supposed to be deployed in protecting those, those kids? So I discovered that in our system, yes, we come up with documents, we come up with uh, talk shows, we, but nobody has been held responsible for his actions. And once people are not accountable to that, you see that keep happening. Again, another aspect could be poor funding to our enforcement agents, our security agencies. We keep hearing that over and over and over. Have we taken time to take stock of what is it that we have in our equipment, in our personnel? What kind of training do they have? What is our response time? When an incident happens, how quick do you respond to it? Because you see, in the crime triangle, there is always the victim, there is always the attacker. But what we do try to reduce is the vulnerability. So what do we do towards that? So when people are not paying close attention to those actions, you keep seeing this thing happening over and over and over again. And you agree with me, that's not the first time it happened in that community. From, I don't know how true it is, we heard that sometime early this year that the principal of that school was attacked. In fact, the wife was kidnapped. The principal was killed. I don't know how true that statement is. But what was it that we, what is it that was put measures that were put in place? So uh, there's a combination of factor that is causing that, and uh, the political will. If the government really wants to do it, I strongly believe they will do it because I have seen where government paid close attention to issues and they resolved it. So I think. Uh, the political will may be there, uh, but because people are not being held accountable to their, for their actions or inactions, we keep seeing this coming back. All right. M Mr. Adekoya. Yeah. Yeah, so you asked on uh, no payment of ransom to make such a statement without commensurate action. Um, then some other question I'll also attempt to answer. Um, of course, clearly, uh, once you are involved directly, um, it, it can be a very tough um, ask on the family. Um, I, agree, I agree with you 100%. But when you're managing kidnap or adoption, um, you must have a clear mind and um, you must be balanced in helping the families navigate the difficulty. Now, government is not an individual. It's an institution. Uh, so government would take a response from the position of an institution. So that's on the one hand. Uh, the other things that the state government, the senators, the House of Reps, the NSC, they are doing to support the family at these times may not also be known to the public. And now I'm not holding brief for them, um, but I expect that some of those actions will be happening at this time. Importantly, We've seen an increase in government security operations, uh, which unfortunately comes with its own collateral risk. Um, remember the drone bombing incident, um, some of those mishaps. So those are some of the um, challenges of confronting armed groups within um, an urban area or a built up area. Uh, so those risks, we also highlight them in some of the reports we put out that as we begin to see increased government security operations, they come with a collateral risk to travelers, to communities, um, unintended as it were. Uh, so I expect that some actions would be going on. Um, it's not out of the place to make those expectations. But importantly, you talked about the other broader issues, and you are correct. When we come on set, we talk about these issues, and we almost leave with a remark saying, we will be back again to discuss these same issues or something worse. Unfortunately, since 1999, we've checked the trend analysis for crime. It has been on a sustained rise. Government to government, service chiefs upon service chiefs, the issues we have are structural issues. And I've argued that the president has no business with internal security. 
to the extent we are currently um, doing that in Nigeria, state governors should be the primarily the chief security officers of their states. I listened to somebody make an argument that um, because the armed bandits are coming with AK-47, when you have state police, they should carry AK-47s. I, I don't share that school of thought. We should, we should do weapons classifications right with the state police formations that we we'll have. They should have service pistols, I agree. Limit the amount of dangerous, um, high-velocity, high-caliber weapons they would have to tactical um, squads supported by the federal police or the NSCDC. There's an arrangement that can work, and the state police will work as a force multiplier, which is currently what is lacking. Uh, it is not for lack of effort, but it's a structural problem. The military has, since the last two presidency, has had operations in over 31 states. There's a national counterterrorism uh, center. We have a national counterterrorism strategy. We've had the Safe School Initiative, which I've picked an issue with, because fences in themselves would not stop somebody carrying an AK-47. So to argue that this current school did not have a fence, just a fence, without a topping, is not a reinforced fence or anything. Right. The, the community outside the school is not necessarily protected. So Mr. there are a number Mr. of Adekoya, issues sorry, that we cannot here. exhaust in one sitting. Absolutely. Mr. Adekoya, yes. I have to come in here. Um, thank you for your time, Mr. Omar. Mr.